The Grand Slam of North American Wild Sheep has been around since Gransel Fitz coined the phrase some 65 years ago. Not quite a decade later, the Grand Slam Club was founded by Bob Householder in 1956. Considering these dates of yesteryear, one would think this lifetime achievement would have lost some of its luster. Those here tonight, however, know the Grand Slam is as important today as it was to Gransel Fitz so many years ago. He wrote an article way back then, and there have been thousands of articles since. Every single documented Grand Slam has been important, and tonight we're honoring many men and women who've completed their Grand Slams within the last couple of years. We'll be breaking this large number of Grand Slammers into groups, so please hold your applause until everyone in each group has been introduced. As your name is called, please quickly make your way to the stage. Now for our first group. Mike Carpenito of Kent, Washington has actually taken a second Grand Slam and is well on his way to a third. We'll talk more about his second slam later. The state of Utah was especially good to Mike in that his first ram was a Rocky Mountain Bighorn from there in 2001. The very next year, he got a desert sheep in Utah. This must have clicked some trigger in his brain concerning the Grand Slam, and in 2005, he went to NWT for a doll. And finally, in 2007, he got his stone in BC, and his first Grand Slam was assigned number 1607. J. Camp Newton of Mountain Home, Arkansas has documentation numbers that almost match. His Grand Slam carries number 1651, and his archery Grand Slam is number 52. Camp traveled to Carmen Island, Mexico to complete his archery Grand Slam in March 2011. He arrowed his first sheep in 2002, a beauty of an NWT doll. Next came a Bozone Alberta Bighorn in November 2005, and Camp Stone was taken in British Columbia in 2007. Grand Slam number 1678 was issued to Francisco Vizcano of Mexico. Between the years of 1987 and 1994, Francisco took the four rams necessary, but only recently documented and registered them with GSCO. Number four was a doll from Alaska in August 1994. He took his first ram, a desert bighorn, naturally from his home country in February of 1987. The stone was taken in British Columbia in August 1990 and he added a California Bighorn from BC in 1992. Francisco didn't stop after the doll, but added an Alberta Bighorn in 2001. Gary Sheffen of Coleman, Wisconsin is number 1691. He is a very lucky man in that he drew a non-resident Rocky Mountain Bighorn permit in 2010. He got a great ram there to become a three-quarter slammer. Gary started in 1999 with a Yukon doll and in 2001 added a very nice stone ram from BC. Gary sealed the deal on December 14, 2011 when he took a desert ram in Sonora, Mexico. It took almost 33 years from start to finish for George Rasband of Salem, Utah to qualify for Grand Slam number 1699. He started with a home state Utah Desert Ram in 1978 and did not add another until he got his doll from NWT in 1987. Lightning struck again for George in 2010 when he drew another Utah tag, this time for a bighorn. After taking that Ram, the stage was set. All he needed was a stone, and he was in British Columbia in August 2011 and culminated their 33 years with a fine Ram there. In August 1999, John R. Drummond of Lodi, California, took his first ram, which was a stone from British Columbia. John drew a bighorn tag in Wyoming in 2003 and filled that tag in October. He went for his doll in the Yukon in 2009 and then got lucky again when he drew a desert tag, this time in Nevada. He filled that tag in November 2011 to become Grand Slammer number 1701. It was just under three and a half years from start to finish for Reno Carifa of Sunbury, Ohio to earn Grand Slam number 1703. It all started with a dark stone from British Columbia in August 2008. In August 2010, he added a doll from NWT. 
and then in October 2011, he traveled to Alberta to get a big horn. Finally, Reno went to South Baja's Carmen Island and completed his Grand Slam with a beautiful desert ram in January 2012. Kim Darville of Cochrane, Alberta has had a relatively long and highly successful sheep hunting career. It all started with a home province Alberta Bighorn in 1999. In 2001 it was on to the Yukon where she got an excellent doll ram. Then came the trials and tribulations that befall so many as it took multiple trips to finally get her stone sheep from British Columbia in 2005. It was in January 2012 that Kim completed Grand Slam number 1704 with a fine desert ram. Kim is obviously a lady Grand Slammer and we'll hear more exciting events concerning her sheep hunting career later this evening when we present those awards. Larry Meyer of Holcomb, Wisconsin registered a three-quarter slam with GSCO a few years ago. His first ram was actually an NWT doll from 1982. Next for Larry came a stone from BC in 1983. That was followed by a California Bighorn from British Columbia in 1984. Larry added another doll from the Yukon in 2005 and went back to the Yukon in 2007 and scored with an outstanding fan and ram to be counted as another stone. Then, in February 2012, Larry went to Sonora, Mexico and completed Grand Slam number 1705 with an excellent desert ram. Grand Slam documentation number 1706 was issued to Alex Brucker of Fort Nelson, British Columbia. The ram that qualified Alex was a fine desert from Sonora, Mexico, taken in February 2012 just after our convention. Matter of fact, Alex was the high bidder for that hunt at our 2011 convention. Along the way, Alex began with a stone sheep in August 2000 from his home province of BC. The very next year, he added another BC ram, this time a Rocky Mountain Bighorn taken in August 2001. Here is a rare situation as Alex took his doll sheep also from BC in August 2003. Yes, BC does have doll sheep in the northwestern corner of the province. Alex. You almost got all four at home, but it had to be fun to travel to Sonora to get away from the cold in February. Kirby Edens of Hillsboro, Texas took two Rams in 2009 and two Rams in 2011 to secure Grand Slam number 1708. His two Rams from 2009 were actually both taken in August, with the first one being a doll sheep from Alaska. A few days later, Kirby was in the Yukon and he got an excellent dark stone ram there as ram number two for the year. Kirby was a very lucky man when he drew a once in a lifetime Rocky Mountain Bighorn tag in New Mexico. He took a huge ram on that special tag in September of 2011. That ram won an award last night at our trophy award ceremony. The final leg for Kirby came in Sonora, Mexico where he took an excellent desert sheep to complete his Grand Slam in December 2011. His son was with him and Kirby said that he's so pleased to pass along the family hunting heritage to his son as the fourth generation. A doll sheep from NWT began the Grand Slam quest for Danny Webb of Smoot, West Virginia in 2009. From that point, Danny in short order took Ram number four to become Grand Slammer number 1709. That ram was a desert from South Baja, Mexico in February of 2012. So it was only a two and a half year quest when Danny set his mind to it. Along the way, he got his stone in BC in August 2010 and his bighorn came from Alberta in September 2011. That completes group one. Again, please make your way to the stage quickly. We now want to move along to the second group of documented Grand Slammers. Again, please hold your applause until everyone in this group has been introduced. As your name is called, please quickly make your way to the stage. Now, for our second group. Roman DeVille of Atlanta, Georgia has been a member of GSCO for many years. He documented his three-quarter slam quite some time ago, but it all began for him with an Alaska doll in 1992. He added a California Bighorn from British Columbia in 1996 
and his stone was also taken in British Columbia, but in September of 1998. So the stage was set, but it was almost 14 years before Roman got his final ram and earned Grand Slam number 1710 in March 2012. We're sure it was worth the wait because that desert chief from Sonora, Mexico was a huge one, as you see from the photo. Some Grand Slams have been completed in less than one year. Larry Corson of Kuna, Idaho, didn't quite do it that way. Let's watch Larry age over his 46 and a half year quest. His first ram was an Alberta Bighorn in 1965. His stone was taken in British Columbia in September 1971. In September 1975, Larry went to Alaska to get his doll sheep. So you've now seen the first 10 years of his Grand Slam quest. We now jump more than 36 years in time to March 2012, and it was then that Larry completed Grand Slam number 1712 with a South Baja Mexico Desert Ram. You'll have to agree, whether it takes one year or 50, a Grand Slam is still an amazing milestone. Grand Slam number 1713 belongs to Mark Magazzi of Ferndale, California. He started out in 1998 by taking a fine doll from Alaska. The very next year, he got his dark stone in British Columbia. Mark must have had sheep fever, because one year later, September 2000, found this man bitten by the sheep bug in Alberta, Canada. He took a bighorn on that hunt to become a three-quarter slammer. And we'd like to point out the quality of that photo, which made us wonder why it was not a cover for the Grand Slam publication. Hmm. Then nearly 12 years later, Mark traveled to Sonora, Mexico, to get an excellent desert sheep to complete his Grand Slam. It was an Alaska doll in September 1986 that set Kenneth Nelson of Andover, Kansas on his way to an eventual Grand Slam number 1714. The next ram for Kenneth was a California Bighorn from British Columbia, taken in September 1990. His stone ram, also from British Columbia, came next in September 1995. Then came the long pause. On January 19, 2012, Kenneth got the job done with a beautiful desert ram from Sonora, Mexico. It's not often that we get to recognize a guide or outfitter for the Grand Slam. So we're most pleased to report that Grand Slam number 1716 belongs to Dustin Rowe of Cranbrook, British Columbia. Dustin calls his outfit Backcountry BC and Beyond, and he's guided dozens of hunters to their sheep. Now it's his turn. Dustin's first sheep toward the slam was an archery taken home province BC stone from August 2006. In 2007, he got a Rocky Mountain Bighorn again from BC. He had to go north to get his 2011 NWT doll, and he certainly had to go south in April 2012 to complete his Grand Slam with a South Baja Mexico desert. It was a desert sheep from Sonora, Mexico in March 2012 that completed Grand Slam number 1718 for David Faust of Austin, Texas. He had waited almost 23 years since becoming a three-quarter slammer with a stone sheep from BC in 1989. It all started for David with an Alaska doll in 1987, but in 1988, he took an amazing bighorn from Alberta to reach the one-half slam mark. This ram was taken near the Katamine mine area, and yes, they had big sheep there back in 1988 too. You're going to see three different doll sheep as we explain the extensive hunting career of Brian Bailey of Onalaska, Washington. Those dolls came in 2001, 2008, and 2009. Next you'll see a 2005 Fannin, and then a 2008 Stone for Brian. Those photos are going to be followed by a pair of California Bighorns Brian took in 1997 and in 2007. They'll be followed by a Rocky Mountain Bighorn from 1998. And finally, we get to the one that got the job done. Brian drew a coveted Nevada Desert Sheep Tag and filled it in December 2011 to complete Grand Slam number 1719. If you were counting, that's nine sheep taken over the past 14 years.
It was a fantastic 42 and a half inch stone ram for British Columbia that set Larry Jenkins of Freedom, Wyoming on the path to Grand Slam number 1720. Next for Larry was an excellent NWT doll that he took in 1992. Larry drew a home state Wyoming bighorn tag in 2007 and filled it in September of that year. Finally, March 2012 came and Larry found himself on a Sonora, Mexico mountain with a desert ram to complete his Grand Slam. Sumner Reggie Cullum of Osceola, Arkansas was issued Grand Slam number 1722 by virtue of his May 2012 South Baja, Mexico Desert Sheep. The Grand Slam was a long time coming for Reggie as he began his quest in September 1978 by taking an Alaska doll. In 1979, he added a stone sheep from British Columbia. And in 1980, Reggie took a Wyoming bighorn. So there you have it. He was a three-quarter slammer by 1980 and it took almost 32 years before Reggie could claim Grand Slam status. Norman Don of Tucson, Arizona has been issued Grand Slam number 1723. He qualified for his number in March 2012 when he took his Sonora, Mexico Desert Ram. Norman's first Ram was a doll taken in Alaska in 2003. He followed that up in 2006 with a beauty of a fan and ram from the Yukon. And you can see the darker body hair of that ram in the photo. All rams are important, but we saved Norman's bighorn for last because it's a bit uncommon. By being an Arizona resident and needing both a desert and bighorn, Norman had been applying for a desert tag because it was easier to draw. Well, he changed that strategy in 2010 and in only his second year of applying drew a coveted Rocky Mountain bighorn tag in his home state. Vern Swarin of Fort Nelson, British Columbia has been issued Grand Slam documentation number 1725. His first ram was a bighorn from Alberta in 2006. Next for Vern was a fine doll from NWT in 2009. And he traveled there again in 2010 and got a broomed old warrior for his efforts. His stone was taken in BC in 2011, so the stage was set. Eight months later, found him in Sonora, Mexico in search of a desert. He took a fine ram in April 2012 that qualified him for the coveted Grand Slam. We now come to Rick Warren of Austin, Texas, who's documented Grand Slammer number 1726. You folks should listen up as this Grand Slam story is going to be something special. Let's begin by stating that the time between Rick's first ram and ram number four was just a couple of days over eight months. The ram you see on the screen was Rick's first one, his Rocky Mountain Bighorn from New Mexico on November 30th, 2011. Between that ram and number two, Rick had two different major surgeries, one of which was a triple bypass. His Desert Bighorn from Texas was taken just over two months after that bypass surgery on April 8, 2012. The next ram for Rick was a fine doll sheep that he took with the Kluani First Nation in the Yukon and that was on July 23, 2012. So it all came down to his stone sheep hunt, and wow, did Rick score big there. On the second day of the season, August 2, 2012, Rick took a ram in BC that scored almost 180 SCI points. As you see from the photo, this is about as beautiful as they get. You probably noticed in the photos that all of Rick's rams are outstanding. On Saturday night, Rick will be honored by being inducted into the 700 Club since these four Rams scores add up to well over 700. So our congratulations go out to Rick on all counts. That completes group two. Again, please make your way to the stage quickly. We now want to move along to the third group of documented Grand Slammers. Again, please hold your applause until everyone in this group has been introduced. As your name is called, Please quickly make your way to the stage. Now for our third group. Gary Mefford of Sheridan, Wyoming completed his Grand Slam in the most uncommon way to receive documentation number 1727. 
He took a doll sheep in the Northwest Territories as his last ram, which is just the opposite of the most common way. Gary's first ram was a fanon from the Yukon way back in 1982. He must have been a man on a mission, waiting to draw in his home state before he hunted sheep again. And for that, he had to wait 26 years. He drew a home state Wyoming bighorn tag in 2008 and got a dandy ram to fill that tag in September. He didn't wait very long to hunt sheep again, and in February 2010, he became a three-quarter slammer with a desert ram from Mexico. So now you know Gary's interesting story of his Grand Slam quest. Van Bethencourt of Mesa, Arizona is an extremely well-documented international big game hunter. However, he let the sheep of North America wait a while, but in September 2012, he finally completed Grand Slam number 1728 with a fine California bighorn from British Columbia. Van's first ram was taken a long time ago in Alaska. He took a doll there in August of 1991. It was almost 19 years later when he got around to number two, which was a desert ram from Sonora, Mexico. He filled in the stone sheep from British Columbia in August 2011. Since Vans hunted most of the world's other big game, we suspect his Ovis World Slam will be next in line, as he, as he already has a Capra World Slam anyway. Marcial Gomez Seguera of Spain began his North American sheep hunting in 1975 with an Alaska doll, and 37 years later earned Grand Slam number 1731 in September 2012 with a California bighorn from British Columbia. His stone sheep was taken in 1978 in BC and he got a desert in 1985 from Sonora, Mexico. Al Hankins of Elliott, Mississippi began his quest for the Grand Slam in 2003 and it all culminated with a Sonora, Mexico desert in 2012 to earn him Grand Slam number 1733. That 2003 Ram was a Rocky Mountain Bighorn from New Mexico. In 2005, he got a doll from Alaska. And the photo you see here looks a bit like a stone, but it's just from the stain of the shale. In 2006, he added a dark and broomed Old Stone Warrior from British Columbia to become a three-quarter slammer. Of course, you already know about his 2012 desert. Congratulations, Al. It's a great pleasure to announce that Grand Slam number 1735 has been issued to Grant Atkinson of Cannon City, Colorado. The first Ram we want to talk about is the one he won at our convention in 2011. Grant was in the Half Slam drawing and his name was called. As a Half Slammer needing both a Bighorn and a Desert, the rules that year were that he won a Bighorn. Grant worked with GSCO and upgraded that hunt to a Desert and the following month, March 2011, became a three-quarter Slammer with a fine desert ram from Sonora, Mexico. Now to back up a bit, Grant's first ram was a doll from NWT in 2003. He added his stone in August 2008, so now you know it was a bighorn that Grant was after. You see him here with that BC ram. Grant, you couldn't wait to see if you could win the three-quarter slam drawing, and we don't blame you. James Henderson of Hattiesburg, Mississippi completed Grand Slam number 1737 in the most common way when he took a desert bighorn in January 2012 as his fourth and last one. James got his stone in September 2005 while hunting in British Columbia. Next in line was a bighorn from Alberta in September 2006. The doll came in August 2007 from the McKenzie Mountains of NWT. We normally don't do this, but the last photo you see here is one Jim sent from his 2006 Bighorn hunt. The gentleman on the left is the legendary George Kelly, who passed away in February 2007. Mapleton, Utah's Robert Friel was issued Grand Slam number 1738 after he took an excellent home state Rocky Mountain Bighorn in November 2012. Fortunately, Robert was able to take his desert from Utah as well, but that ram was taken way back in 1996. To round out the four, we'll show you the stone sheep that he took in the Yukon in 2001, and his doll, also from the Yukon, taken in 2002. John Kupiak of Grand Block, Michigan is documented Grand Slammer number 1740. 
He took his first Ram, a doll in NWT's in McKenzie Mountains in 2003. Next came a stone from British Columbia in 2005. John's three-quarter slam Ram was a fine desert sheep from Sonora, Mexico in January 2006. After that came a bit of a wait, but in August 2012, John traveled to Alberta, Canada and was able to complete his Grand Slam with an excellent Rocky Mountain Bighorn. By the way, John wasn't doing a lot of waiting because he traveled to Alberta three different times between 2006 and 2012 and came away without a ram. He says his Alberta Bighorn came on the 53rd day of pursuing his dream. Donald Mann of Buena Vista, Colorado signed up as a three-quarter slammer when we first began to recognize that award status. He's been at every convention and is a tremendous supporter of GSCO's efforts. The ram you first saw on the screen was a huge stone of 175 and 3 8 B and C points Donald took in 2000 BC. That was not Don's first sheep. As a Colorado resident, he drew a tag in 1999 after 10 years of applying and filled it with an excellent ram. The sheep that got Don to three-quarter slam status came in 2002 in NWT, and of course, it was a doll. The wait began, and 10 years later, Don finally hit pay dirt when he drew his desert sheep tag to qualify as Grand Slammer number 1746. You've seen him here with that beauty of a ram. In the last photo, we want to show you of Don and the entire hunting team he said he had named Operation Desert Sheep. Greg Eschelman of Monton, Pennsylvania now has registered Grand Slam number 1749. Greg was so fortunate to complete his Grand Slam with a huge desert ram from New Mexico. He drew that tag from some overwhelming odds. As you see from the photo, he certainly made good on getting a good record book ram and completing his Grand Slam all at once. Greg's sheep hunting dates back to an NWT doll that he took in 2002. And next came a fine stone ram from BC in 2005. Greg got to three-quarter slam status with an Alberta Bighorn in 2007. Justin Ragazine of Youngstown, Ohio didn't waste any time in taking the four Rams to qualify himself for Grand Slam number 1750. As a matter of fact, it was just slightly over 14 months as the first one was taken on August 23, 2011, a doll from NWT. Going to the last one that was a November 29, 2012 Desert Cheap from Tiburon Island, Mexico. Frankly, both that doll and desert are mighty amazing trophies as you've seen from the photos here. Now to fill in the blanks, we first go to Justin's August 2012 really dark colored stone that he took in British Columbia. His three-quarter slam ram was taken by Bo, as you'll gather from the photo. Justin braved the cold of Alberta's Canmore Bow Zone to get that excellent bighorn on November 23rd 2012. We can see that Justin's a young man and it sure seems he has a bright mountain hunting future ahead of him. What GSCO milestone will Justin receive at next year's convention? That completes group three. Again, please make your way to the stage quickly. Now let's move along to the fourth group of documented Grand Slammers. Our next two Grand Slammers are a father and daughter team of Jeff and Madeline Damoski of Greeley, Colorado. Madeline prefers to be called Maddie. We were able to give them consecutive numbers of 1756 for Jeff and 1757 for Maddie. Actually, Jeff did complete his Grand Slam first by taking a big horn on Montana's Blackfeet Indian Reservation in February of 2012. Maddie was not too far behind as she took her fourth ram in August 2012, a stone from British Columbia. Moving back to Jeff, we find that he took his stone in BC as well, but in 2010. As for Maddie's doll, she got it in NWT and in 2011, and Jeff had gotten his doll the previous year. Maddie was along for that trip, and you'll see her in the photo with Jeff. That must have been where she got sheep fever because in November 2010, Maddie took her first ram, a California bighorn from Oregon. As for the desert sheep, Jeff got his first when he traveled to Sonora, Mexico in February 2011. Not much later that year in June, Maddie took her desert in Texas. Jeff waited a few months to register his slam in order to get those consecutive numbers and were most pleased to assign them to this father-daughter team. 
This concludes our fourth and final group of Grand Slammers. But stick around, ladies and gentlemen, as we're going to move to a new group of awards momentarily. For now, let's give all these Grand Slammers a final round of applause. The Grand Slam of North American Wild Sheep is, in fact, a lifetime achievement. Many hunters choose to take only the four rams of a Grand Slam at a lifetime and move on to other big game hunting. However, there are many whose sheep fever continues to draw them to the mountains. Sometimes it's just to hunt one or two additional rams, but there are those who desire to experience the thrill of hunting all the North American wild sheep all over again. In due course, naturally those people complete a second or third and sometimes even more Grand Slams. Tonight, we have a few people who have documented multiple Grand Slams. We want to recognize those individuals as a group and please hold your applause until everyone has been introduced. As your name is called, please make your way to the stage. First, we come to those who have completed a second Grand Slam. Earlier, you saw recognition of Mike Carpenito of Washington for Grand Slam number 1607. At that time, we mentioned he had also documented a second Grand Slam, so we'd like for him to come to the stage now for that accomplishment. Actually, Mike has half of a third slam under his belt, according to our records. As for his second slam, we're using a beauty of a 2006 California Bighorn, his 2008 Stone, and his second Grand Slam Ram, a doll from 2009. Earlier this evening, we recognized Jeff Damoski of Colorado and his daughter Maddie for their consecutive Grand Slams. At the same time they documented those sheep, Jeff sent in the information for his second Grand Slam. Interestingly, Jeff took his first doll in NWT in 2010 and went back with the same outfitter to get the other one in 2011. The same goes for his stone, as his first was in British Columbia in 2010 and he went back in 2011 to get yet another. His first desert came from Mexico in February 2011, but number two for Jeff was a Utah desert from November 2011. The bighorns were from different places as well. Jeff has a Rocky for his first slam, but got a California bighorn in Idaho in 2012 to complete Grand Slam number two. Congratulations, Jeff, on taking two slams in just over two years. North Dakota's Mike Roofer completed his second Grand Slam in December 2010. He was lucky enough to draw a tag for the Muddy Mountains and filled it with the beautiful ram you see here. The first ram for Mike's second slam was an outstanding stone he took in 1999. Then came a doll in 2000 and the third in the series was a bighorn from 2006. That 2006 ram was also taken on a luckily drawn tag but from Wyoming. It's now time to recognize a man who's done a lot of North American sheep hunting, and that is George Chi Law of Idaho. You're going to see several sheep on the screen while we're talking about this man. He has a total of five dolls, two stones, one fannin, one California bighorn, two Rocky Mountain bighorns, and two desert sheep. One of those was from Nevada and qualified him for Grand Slam number 976 back in 2001. If you were keeping up, that would mean with one more desert, George will reach a third Grand Slam. However, we're only recognizing him for a second Grand Slam tonight. And that came by virtue of a very special desert sheep that he took in Arizona in 2011. You'll see that chocolate colored ram here, and you just might get confused thinking it's a Rocky Mountain Bighorn. But Arizona does produce some dark ones like that on occasion. George, we know you'll continue to pound the mountains of North America to add to the 13 rams that you already have. We'd like to report a second Grand Slam for Greg Ovaland of Alberta, which was completed with a huge Tiburon Island Mexico desert ram in March 2012. You're going to see a lot of sheep on the screen for Greg, and we'll just let you enjoy those while we tell you a little bit about all the North American sheep hunting this man's done. Somewhere in this group, you're going to see his other desert ram, and mixed in, you'll see three Rocky Mountain bighorns, a California bighorn, four doll sheep, and six stone sheep. If you were listening closely, you would have realized that with two more deserts, Greg would qualify for a fourth Grand Slam. But Greg, the third and fourth, 
will have to be at a future convention. Ed Yates of Pennsylvania has certainly done a lot of big game hunting all around the world. However, he's most definitely concentrated on the mountain species along the way, and is one of the very few people to have the 30-30. That is, an Ovis World Slam Super 30 and a Capra World Slam Super 30. As you'll have seen on the screen already from his first Grand Slam, Ed's not neglected North American sheep hunting, and we're ready to honor him for his second Grand Slam he completed in August of 2012 with a fine doll sheep from NWT. The other three rams from his second slam were a California Bighorn taken in 2006 and a beauty of a Fannin ram taken in the Yukon in 2008. Ed added a desert in early 2012 to get into position to have that second Grand Slam. Brett Dolph now lives in Utah and we'd like to report on his second Grand Slam which he completed in November 2011 by taking a beauty of a Nevada Desert Ram. The whole family was along for that hunt, including his father, brother, and son. His first Grand Slam, number 1489, was completed in 2009, when he was living in Idaho. But here we want to talk more about his second four Rams. Besides the desert that he took in 2011, he also got a Fannin, which of course counted as a stone from the Yukon in August of 2011. Backing up a little for the Bighorn, he took that ram in Colorado self-guided in 2003. And to finish out the four, we want to show you Brett's August 2005 doll, also from the Yukon. Tom Zimmerman of Wisconsin completed a second Grand Slam in December 2012 with a Nevada Desert Sheep. He took his first desert in January 2011 and was lucky enough to draw a Nevada tag to get another one. The doll for Tom's second slam was from Alaska in 2002, the stone from BC in 2011, the bighorn from Colorado in 2009, and he even has another sheep to begin a quest for the third slam. In 2008, he took a Fannin sheep in the Yukon. Congratulations, Tom, and keep after those North American sheep. Dwayne Lee of California completed his second Grand Slam in August 2011 with a beauty of a stone ram. Dwayne's second slam started with a 1997 doll from Alaska. Next came two rams in 2009, a Colorado Bighorn and Desert from Baja, Mexico. He's already on his way to a third Grand Slam, since he took another Desert in 2011 as well. And we just had to show you that one too. Jim Craig of Indiana has documented a fifth Grand Slam with a fine old desert ram that he took on Carmen Island, Mexico in December 2012. After that desert ram, you're going to begin seeing a string of other sheep we chose to honor Jim's accomplishment. For example, the next one is also a desert ram taken in 2012, but back in January. That ram completed Jim's fourth Grand Slam, and we're going to present him with that award tonight as well. According to the excellent records Jim has sent to GSCO, he has a total of 25 North American sheep. We find six big horns, but two of those are of the California variety. There are seven dolls and seven stones. Then we count five desert rams. Therefore, there seems to be an awfully good possibility that Jim just might be after another desert ram in order to up that recognition to six Grand Slams. So good luck to you, Jim. We'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate Douglas Leach of West Virginia for having completed six Grand Slams. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we did not miss that. It's six Grand Slams. To date, there have been only two other people who have documented six Grand Slams. One of those was the late Francis Bouchard, and the other is Butch Kuflak, who has documented 11 Grand Slams. Well, getting back to Doug, you've been seeing eight different doll sheep he's taken between 2001 and 2011. And it should be obvious that Doug has gotten some great ones. As for the Bighorns, again, you're going to see some pretty amazing trophies. Those date back to 2003. And Doug actually took two Rocky Mountain Bighorns in 2012. The last one you see is a California Bighorn from Nevada, also taken in 2012. Moving along to Stone Sheep, you'll see some pretty fantastic rams. Those date back to 2004 and follow through to his last one in 2011. 
Many believe that a stone sheep hunt on average can be the toughest in North America, as those hunts practically always require many days of steep climbs. When you add in that Doug was after big ones, you should begin to understand this man's amazing career in the mountains. Finally, we're going to show you Doug's deserts, of which he has six. The first one came from Mexico in 2002, and all but one of his deserts have been taken in that country. In the mix, you'll find a couple of the famed Tiburon Island Desert Sheep, and the last one was taken in December 2012 with the Navajo Nation. Doug was the high bidder for that tag at our 2012 convention. Before leaving Doug, GSCO would like to offer thanks to this man for his commitment to wild sheep conservation. He grew up in Pennsylvania farm country and was the first person in his family to go to college. He had to work four jobs to put himself through and accomplish the American dream in business. He's now been able to sell out and retire to full-time hunting, but he still will put his wife and six children far in front of that endeavor. Many of the rams Doug has taken were on special conservation tags. He started with nothing and has certainly given back to the wildlife that we all enjoy so much. Yes, we want to honor Doug for six grand slams and 28 total North American sheep, but we also need to give credit in these other ways where it certainly is due. That completes our multiple Grand Slammers. Again, please make your way to the stage quickly. Now let's give them one more round of applause. We now come to another special part of our Grand Slam program. Beginning with our first convention in 2005, We've tried to recognize all those who have taken a Grand Slam of North American wild sheep with bow and arrow. To date, there have been only 52 documented archery Grand Slams. That small number should give some indication of the difficulty of this amazing feat. We'll now move to some of those dedicated individuals who've documented the archery Grand Slam milestone. Please hold your applause till every one of this group has been introduced. As your name is called, please make your way to the stage. Alabama's Warren Strickland holds Archery Grand Slam number 25. Warren's first sheep was a doll from NWT in 1999. He traveled to the bow zone of Alberta in November 2000 to get an outstanding bighorn. Next came the desert in December 2002 from Sonora, Mexico. The final ram for Warren came in 2006 when he arrowed a beautiful wide stone in British Columbia. Warren is well known in the bow hunting world of big game hunters. We're pleased to be able to honor him here tonight. It took just over two years for Richie Bland of Georgia to complete archery Grand Slam number 27. It all started for Richie in July 2004 when he got his doll sheep in NWT. The next year in 2005, he got an excellent Rocky Mountain Bighorn from the Ute Indian Reservation in Utah. Then in 2006, he got the final two rams. The first came in August and was a stone from British Columbia. In October 2006, Richie got a fine desert bighorn from Utah. Incidentally, that desert sheep also completed an archery super slam for Richie. Archery Grand Slammer number 52 is J. Camp Newton of Arkansas. It took Camp approximately nine and a half years to accomplish his amazing archery milestone. The doll was first from NWT in August 2002. The Carmen Island, Mexico desert was last in March 2011. Sandwiched between were an outstanding Alberta bighorn in November 2005 and a dark colored and beautiful stone from BC in 2007. That concludes our archery Grand Slammers. Now let's give them all one more round of applause. Now we recognize our Lady Grand Slammers. Earlier, you heard quite a bit about Kim Darville Grand Slam number 1704 of Alberta. In that tribute, we mentioned you were going to learn more about her hunting career. First of all, Kim is being honored here as Lady Grand Slammer number 58. She completed her Grand Slam in January 2012 with a desert chief from Sonora. Her bighorn was first, and it came from Alberta in October 1999. The doll was second, and she got that ram in the Yukon in August 2001. Now to the important additional information. Kim went on four different stone sheep hunts in British Columbia and hunted 52 days, 
before she took her stone ram to become a three-quarter slammer on August 23, 2005. Now, she messed up a knee on hunt number two, had surgery, lots of PT, and even more difficulties before she finally got that stone. Now, some wonderful news to add, which wasn't mentioned earlier. In 2009, Kim was very fortunate to draw a special permit that allowed her to hunt the famous Catamine mine area of Alberta. On that November hunt, she filled that tag with a huge old ram that scored well over 180. We told you this lady had an exciting sheep hunting career. We're so pleased to have Madeline Damoski as the second lady to honor tonight. Maddie is the 59th lady to ever complete and register a Grand Slam. You of course saw Maddie honored earlier as she and her father Jeff have consecutive Grand Slam numbers. It's all about Maddie now as she has now become an accomplished young woman as far as mountain hunting is concerned. Maddie went with Jeff in 2010 when he took his doll sheep and the following year found her back in NWT to get one for herself. Maddie's first ram was a California Bighorn from Oregon in November 2010. The next was a June 2011 desert from Texas. The doll we just mentioned was next, and it was a fine stone sheep from British Columbia that completed her Grand Slam in August 2012. This completes this last special group, so let's give not only them, but all the Grand Slammers a great big round of applause for this amazing mountain hunting milestone. We now want to move to a man who definitely gets to claim the word unique as concerns Grand Slam recognition tonight. We invite George Lawrence III of Spokane, Washington to begin making his way to the stage. Actually, if we've been calling George's name in the normal order tonight, he would have been on the stage four different times by this point. We decided to combine the recognition for his four awards into one trip up here, and you'll be seeing many photos of his various sheep as we go along. The first group we recognized tonight were the numbered Grand Slammers. George was issued number 1743 for that milestone in his career. The next group we honored were those who had taken multiple Grand Slams. At that point, we could have recognized George for a second, third, and even fourth Grand Slam. We'll have an award for George for that fourth slam, and after the multiple Slammers, we went to those who had documented an archery Grand Slam. We could have called George to the stage at that time to be among his peers with archery Grand Slam number 48. George completed his archery Grand Slam in fairly short order, with a big horn in 2008, both a doll and a desert in 2009, and a fan and stone in 2010. By the way, George's fourth Grand Slam has two additional archery taken rams, so he certainly is an accomplished bow hunter. At this point, we could probably attribute that word we started with unique to George with these three accomplishments. However, we must add one more to his list. It's not often, but on some years, we get to honor those who have taken and registered a Grand Slam by muzzle loader. Well, you guessed it. We now want to recognize George Lawrence for muzzle loader Grand Slam number six of all time. He completed that muzzle loader slam in October 2011 with the Big Horn from Washington. Oh, by the way, remember that fourth Grand Slam of George's that contains two archery rams? It also contains two muzzle loader rams as well. We might as well tell the rest of the story as George has an additional desert and bighorn with a black powder rifle and another desert by conventional rifle. If you were keeping count, that's 19 total North American rams by all different methods. Yes, George is unique in his Grand Slam accomplishments, so let's really give him a hand. Wayne Farnsworth Jr. of Ohio could have been recognized earlier for his third Grand Slam completed in 2012. However, we've waited to this point to recognize him for that achievement because his third slam is also muzzleloader Grand Slam number seven. For several years, we didn't even have a muzzleloader Grand Slammer, but since you see that Wayne's number seven, this method is becoming more popular. It'd be a great thing if we were just recognizing Wayne for a third slam and muzzleloader slam number seven, but there is more, ladies and gentlemen, and you're seeing a variety of photos from Wayne's Grand Slam archives. Wayne completed his original Grand Slam number 702 by rifle back in 1996. Then he got very serious with bow and arrow. 
and completed an archery grand slam number 46 in 2010. We recognized Wayne at our 2011 convention for his archery slam. So you should have guessed by now that Wayne has three grand slams by three different methods. He, along with the GSCO office, fully believed that Wayne was the first person to accomplish this feat. However, George Lawrence III documented his three slams by the same three methods just before we received Wayne's materials. We were aware that Wayne had gotten the job done during 2012, but didn't know at that time that someone else had done it earlier. Does this take away from Wayne's accomplishment? Why, of course not. Now we'll explain a little about Wayne's muzzle loader slam. He took all four rams in just six months. It all started with a Great Desert Ram in Mexico in March 2012. Wayne had won one of our Super Slam raffle hunts for a doll sheep, and he took that ram next in July in NWT. Knowing that he had the Desert Sheep and Doll Sheep hunts booked for 2012, Wayne said he booked a stone at our 2012 convention, and sure enough, he got that ram in BC in early August. The final ram for Wayne was an Alberta Bighorn in September, so again, it was only six months from start to finish for his muzzleloader Grand Slam number seven. We're so pleased to honor Wayne and George Lawrence as the only two individuals to ever accomplish this phenomenal feat of three slams by three different methods. So let's give Wayne a big round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, we've now concluded our Grand Slam awards for this year. You realize we've honored those who have registered a Grand Slam recently, those who have taken multiple Grand Slams and archery Grand Slams, and have honored the ladies